If you're looking for ways to customize your cardstock modeling kit, then this video could be for you. With just a few steps in either Photoshop or Photoshop Elements, you can easily add the weathering effects of acid rain and soot. Hi, welcome to another episode of Cardstock Modeling. I'm your host, Sam Miller. Recently, I've done some experimenting in Photoshop on building exteriors, specifically brick structures, to try and replicate the effect of acid rain and soot. I found that there's brush sets available for free downloads into Photoshop that will help achieve those results. As you can see with this screen example, some ones use paint, sprays, solvents, or powders to come up with a realistic look of a building being weathered. But it didn't start out that way. So now let's take a look in Photoshop to see what can be done to simulate that same look. As a way of helping you understand this episode as an exercise, I've included a link that's just below the video that is to my Google Drive. After clicking on the link below the YouTube video, you'll see this file in my Google Drive. Download it and put it in a place that you're familiar with. Then go to the location on your computer where you downloaded it. In this case, I called it Google Drive Download. Open that file. And you can see it's already unzipped and the file's contents are a side-by-side -side Photoshop file with the exercise and layers. The two brushes that I've included to use in this project for both um, adding soot and acid rain. The same photo elements uh, file as the Photoshop file. And this is a RTF file that if you click on, it shows the links to the actual free brushes at Photoshop to download, as well as a YouTube video explaining how to download those brushes into uh, Photoshop Elements. So clicking on the Adobe link for free brush set downloads, I'll show you the source of these free brushes that I've included to download in the files. Scrolling down, these are all free for you to install and they work in both Photoshop and in Photoshop Elements. Scrolling down, I downloaded the dry media and also the spatter. So now once you've opened up the weathering file, then click on the brush file and that will install it in Photoshop. And as you can see, it says Sam Weathering. And there's the two brushes that we'll be using in this exercise. So let's take a look and to see how we got to achieve the soot results that are on these ledges and below the windows. It's up to your creativity to where you'd like to place them as well as the acid rain between the windows, below the window, and then on the right side of the building. The first thing you'll want to do is to create an extra layer. And in this case, I'm going to call it acid rain. So now that you've created a new layer called acid rain, right here. Go over to your brush tab and select Acid Rain. Those are the two new brushes that you've installed with a folder that's been uh, imported called Sam Weathering. 
Then next go to the brush settings. And this will make a big difference in terms of the effect of the brush. Notice that the brush is at 87. That's the size of the brush. And the spacing on it is 30. You can see the difference by changing the size in this panel down here, the effect, or increasing it to 87. Let's say 87, 90, right there. Now the spacing, you'll take a look at the density. It's not as dense at 47, but we take it back to 30, it's a lot denser. Also, um, on the layer settings, I changed that from normal, the blending, down to lighten. Now we can go over to the image on the left side of the printable kit and go between the windows to try and simulate what's been done with either uh, paint solution or powders or sprays on this particular example. So we go between the windows and just start to lightly spatter it and then change your that. Now go to the opacity level and start to decrease it to your liking. My goodness, doesn't look too bad. Still using the same acid rain layer, I'm going to go below the window and try an effect here. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is to take this acid rain layer and put it below the windows so that you can see that the acid rain is below the windows and not on the shelf. Next, what I'm going to do is come up here and click on the, the marquee and come over and highlight a section of the wall on the right side. What this does, it isolates the effect of the brush. Come back to the brushes, click on the brush, which will activate it. Go back to this marquee spacing and see if I can replicate this effect on the wall. So, what I'm going to do on that is to go back to the brush settings and change those from 87 and 30 to keep the size the same, but maybe increase the spacing to 50 or 60. And then we'll see what happens. So let's just take this and see what happens. So basically it's isolated at the one side. And you can see if I try to go over, it doesn't go outside that, so there's more. And there's your acid rain. Uh, select, deselect, okay. And I save it. Now the next thing we're gonna do is create a layer and we're gonna call that soot. So create a new layer and call it soot. Now you're on the soot layer, and you're gonna go up and click on the charcoal shape SAM soot. And you can come over here under the foreground color, and you can see it's changed to a charcoal color or black. The reason that is, is when I created the preset brush that you're able to download, it saved that color, but you can change it to anything. Now going back to the brush settings, we can take a look and see that it's at uh, 71 with a 1% spacing, the size. Now under the soot layer, you want to come and put that as an overlay as far as the blending options. Now, let's, now that we're on the soot layer, let's go to the top ledge and see what it looks like by And you can make more passes, changing the shape of the soot. 
and we can even increase the opacity from to about there, about 89%. Now let's go to the lower ledge and on the underside, create some soot there, and even on the top side, we caught it. Okay, and then I'm gonna take a little bit of this soot and put it underneath the, this window right here. But what you can do is take the soot and, and change the, the position of the layer of soot to under the acid rain. So that one, any acid rain is on top. And let's go back and, and just add some more soot here. Increase the opacity slightly. So there you have it. Not too shabby. I hope this exercise has helped you as it's helped me improve my understanding and skill sets with Photoshop tools. So we can take a look at before the acid rain and soot and now we apply what we did with acid rain for weathering and some soot. So I'll let you be the judge if this was an effective tool for you to customize your cardstock modeling kit. Thanks again so much to all you people that have subscribed and viewed the channels and added some very constructive and positive comments. It helps make my day and I look forward to learning more and sharing more. And remember, it's all about having fun. See you the next episode.